hope y'all clean cuts the one back with another video. My little man Brylin just got in with the fresh faux hawk. Let him see. Let him see. Just got in with the fresh faux hawk. Yeah. But that's not this cut video. The grind never stops. So let me know what you think about this mid to low fade. Let me know. Is it a low fade? Is it a mid fade? You know, give me your feedback. So uh, yeah, this is all my girl Tori. Shout out to Tori. Thanks for letting me do the video. And check it out. All right, so let's get into the cut. The first thing I do with this cut is I open my clip with no guard all the way around. And I'm kind of dropping it in the back. It could be a mid fade, low fade, shadow fade. Like I said, let me know what y'all think. Uh, everything I do on one side, I'm gonna do on the other side. And I'm just kind of contouring the original guideline to her head. You can see her occipital, how the shape is. So. Kind of making sure I got that even all the way around and then I find that it's easier sometimes for me to go in with my outliners last or my balding clippers last and uh, so that's just the way I've chose to do it on this video no real rhyme or reason just a smaller space to blend in so that's how it ended up happening like this just flicking off kind of flicking into what I just did so that way when I go back to my clippers and I close it all the way down I can really see what's going on and that's what I've done here is I've, I've got no guard this is the baby lid babyless has pro effects I've got it closed all the way down you can see I'm just flicking the lever open there I'll start with the lever all the way closed at the bottom of the line then I'll flick it open a little bit come higher flick it open a little more come a little higher or I'll bump the lever as it's called and uh, I'm the type I fade on one side I take one guideline out then I go to the other side and I take the guideline out and then I bring it together in the back. That's just the way I've been functioning for a while now. I don't really go all the way around. I do in some situations. But you can see every time I've bumped the guard open that I'm going just a little bit higher. This is all the way open. So what I'm going to do, you can kind of see a bump in the guideline there. I'm going to really take careful care to even that back out. Because, you know, sometimes mistakes happen. And that's what happened in that situation. You can see behind her left here, there's just a little bump in the guideline. So I'm definitely going to go back and take care of that. But right now, I'm just bringing it all together back in the back. And it's the same thing all the way around. It's the same thing with fading in general. I look at it in fifths. I explained it in the last video. I look at a guideline as five sections. I imagine this is the number one guard. I'm gonna start creating my guideline open. I imagine that there's five sections, and when my gut, when my when my um, when the lever is closed, then I'm working on section one, right? If my guard is halfway open, then I should be halfway in the midst of the guideline. Like I imagine that the guideline is the lever. If that makes sense. I'm going to pick out this one open guard, get the zero all the way closed, take out the bottom, and bump up. And I've tried to slow it down so you guys can see me hitting the lever, because I know that was one thing in a lot of videos. I couldn't really see people hitting the lever, and I didn't really know when they were doing it or why. Uh, so hopefully this helps. And I think speeding up the footage not only makes for a shorter video so you can take the information in quicker, when you move faster, you can actually kind of see the lines coming out better. You can see when I raise the clipper up, when I go higher and stuff like that. I get a whole lot of these um, fades on the side with some type of variation of a part and a comb over on top. Definitely good. A lot of these cuts and none of them look the same because each one of them is tailored for the individual. You can see right now I'm touching up that little dark spot. Again, all the way closed, just working my way up. Let me know what you guys think about that spot in the back of her left head. Um, I do know that there is a there's a little uh, I want to say a bump, right? There's a contour in her scalp. You know, nobody's head's the same. And you gotta make a decision. Do you want to keep fading and bringing it down, or do you leave it to where, yeah, that spot right there, or do you leave it to where, you know, it looks dark? I definitely don't want it to look dark, but you know, if you take it too light, 
you'll be all the way in there. So finding that balance on the blend, especially in the back where the occipital contours and stuff like that can be a, a process. But you know, you do the best you can do. I suspect that my lever was almost midway open because I was going about halfway up the guideline. And I popped the guard off. At any given time, if I pop the guard off and go back to um, the no guard, it's because I'm touching something up. I'm seeing that my guard's not touching something, and I know that it needs to come, it needs to be blended in. This is a number two open, by the way, creating another guideline just like I did before. And I'm definitely flicking out when I get to the occipital. I'll make sure never to contour into, you know, the occipital there. And I use my comb to uh, keep the, the comb the combed over hair out of the way. When you're on that line, you don't want to take out any of that long hair because if you take out just about 10 hairs, it'll be when you comb it over, it just won't look right. So I've got my one guard closed, taking out the bottom line. Same thing for the whole cut. I just bumped my lever off the screen, put the note there just so you guys know. Coming up just a little bit higher. I've gained a whole nother respect for these dudes out here doing these cut videos like they are. It takes at least, for me, when I film a video, it takes at least an hour, especially if it's got a beard trim, about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes to film the cut, to stay out of the way of the camera so that you guys can see what's going on. And then, like, every single video that you see posted, like Jeezy, Bossio, Matt Gifted Hands, Christian Perez, all these dudes that are putting out these videos, seriously, for every single video, there's at least a minimum of three hours worth of editing involved. And, uh, man, I never realized how much went into it. And uh, I tell you, the reason why they continue to put out the product and why they don't care is because they're in love with this industry, we're in love with... Um, everything about barbering we're in love with passing on information and it really doesn't feel like work when you love what you're doing going back to my zero popping it all the way down gonna to touch some stuff up here but yeah man this barber life there's nothing like it I can't believe I just started school in August of 2015 licensed in August of 2016 I mean literally my dreams are coming true so I've had a lot of you guys asking me about the Believer Barber bracelets. Um, I try to remember to include a link in the description there for that. For those of you who are audio, cleancutgrooming.bigcart, excuse me, www.cleancutgrooming.bigcartel.com. I'm going in here with my two guard closed. Doing the same pattern, you see me bump the lever, bump. Every time you see me, that's kind of like my little mannerism or my habit. I uh, kind of shoot my clipper off to the right to bump it. I don't know what it is. It's kind of, you kind of develop a, a swag. Now, I, I wet the hair just a little bit because it helps the hair lay over. The hair binds together and it seems to lay over a lot easier and lets me separate the part naturally. Those flaresol, bo those flaresol bottles are a beast too. So I see some of this stuff didn't come out, so I'm going back in with my one open just to really try to touch up on the blend there around the top. And that crown area can be difficult. By the time the cut's finished, you just check the silhouette, make sure it's clean all the way around, you don't have any hair sticking out, and you should be all right. So on the part, Try to keep it as natural as possible, and I always make sure to hit both sides of the part. You got the bottom, which I'm hitting now, and then you flip your clipper around, and then you hit your top. And that ensures a clean line. And if you're not razoring out your parts or your cuts, you should be. I know it's difficult at first, but once you get the knack of it, it works out well. She comes in every about every week to 10 days. So there's not a whole lot of hair that needs to come off. Uh, I do point cut regularly, uh, more so than I straight cut because it adds a 
a texture. It adds um, helps prevent those lines that can get into it. Uh, if you want to prevent those lines, also you could just be thorough. Don't you know take ten ten strokes instead of four strokes to cut the whole top head of hair. And then also if you cross check, you can get those waves out. But I just choose to point cut with this one. I like the way it lays better. And there's always these guys on the edge that I have to get. Now I come over where it comes over and I use uh, sheer over comb to just try to knock off those edges and make it blend well because you don't want it to look like you got a shelf sitting up there. Sheer over comb, clipper over comb. Definitely have to have that as part of your, uh, your arsenal of what you do. And then I use my uh, multi-tooth shears as well on the Parada Ridge to help that lay a lot cleaner. Very helpful. I start my line up to the center and work one direction and then work the other direction and then I check it when I'm done. A lot of people go left and right, left and right, left and right till they've got a straight line. It's just different. I'm using the corner of my edger like a pencil trying to put a sharp line on there. I'm not pushing very hard. It kind of looks like I am because the video is going fast but I'm really not pushing that hard. Pretty delicate. And I'm finding that there's a lot of value in just tapping. I didn't understand this and I'm just like this is a major key alert right here. I don't know what it is. A lot of it comes with repetition and as you develop your feel for how you use your clippers, when you just tap the trimmers, it seems like they take away more hair. You see I'm using the 245 razor. I'm not using any shave gel because she's got a particular hair density and texture to where I just use water for her. Um, yeah, I'm using my 245 razor holder. And you can see I'm kind of holding the razor flat, uh, kind of parallel to the skin. Not really, but I can tell you, but the more parallel you hold it, the easier it is. I know on the scalp, sometimes those follicles can be kind of thick when you're trying to razor out a short area and you can end up nicking your client. Again, I'm definitely going to make sure to razor out both sides. That way that line is crispy on both sides. Boy, navigating around these cameras are fun. <laughs> Got the 245 shave gel. Let me pick that up at 245.com. Stretching that skin. Most important part. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, my camera ran out of memory, and she had to come in the next day to let me take um, the styling part of this haircut, and also the, um, you know, the final picture. So you're going to notice I'm wearing a Tagliente Sheer Company shirt where I was wearing a Fade shirt. So don't pay any attention to that. The cut's still fresh. <laughs> Come on guys, give me a break. I'm the new guy. And this is Champagne Grooming Company. You get it from uh, my friend Jeffrey the Barber. He sent it to me. Checking it out. It smells really good. It's kind of like a fruity wine, pomegranate. Um, it's a water-based pomade. I really, really, really like it. I'll put the link in the description. Now, I'm using the thick teeth. The reason I'm showing you that is because I'm using these thick teeth only to distribute the product through the hair. I'm not really shaping the hair. But I do uh, comb the bangs forward, and I start in the back of the part, and I comb the hair over. Um, into place and then I comb the front of the hair upwards at an angle and then I hold my left hand there as if it's going to do something but it don't really do too much <laughs> and then I use the thin teeth to actually add that really smooth texture to really make it look good again don't let your left hand do anything <laughs> I use it in the front I'm just kidding guys it's funny what you do when you're not paying attention and then I wet where the hair lays down right here. If you just wet it just a little bit and comb it into place, especially with a water-based pomade, it'll really blend it in together. And that's the cut, y'all.
Definitely want to hear what you guys think about it. Let me know what you thought about the video. I want thumbs up. I want comments. I want participation. And I want you guys to critique the cut. I want you guys to make me a better barber. Because I am not done learning. Strive to be better every single day. And you should too. Alright guys, that was a mid-fade, low-fade video, whatever type of fade it was. You guys can let me know what you want to call it. Let me know what you think. And don't forget, critique the cut. Let me know how I can get better. Make me a better barber. Also, if you haven't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, right? Follow me on Instagram for sure. Subscribe, Instagram. And then also, don't forget, hashtag AndisLI giveaway. If you want to win that Andis Envy Li on February 3rd. That's when I'm going to announce it. I'm going to announce it via Instagram. I'll put it in a YouTube video as well. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Until the next time, peace.